Um, my name is Kevin Simons, contrary to your program, I'm not Sarah Nasco. I am what you call a pinch hitter today. So I'll be stepping in and we'll be talking about the visit link. Let's see if we can get this going here. All right, so I don't know if you have noticed, but the visit link was once a staple of website design, but now it's virtually disappeared from many websites, e-commerce websites in particular, and that's not a good thing. Uh, back, in 19, or back in 2004, Jacob Nielsen was reporting that 74% of websites were using a different color for visited versus unvisited links. But now I think that contrary to what the visited link might want to argue, I think the experience tells us that that number is, is much less today. Case in point, the internet retailer, top 10 retailers for 2011. Of these, only two of them were actually making effective use of the visited link. And if we looked at the top 100, we'd actually find that that number or that percent is, is much lower. But really, what's the big deal? Why is it important to use the visit link? The difference has to do with the difference between recognition versus recall. And recall, the user has to pull things back from memory and then select from the correct option. Whereas in recognition, options are laid out and you just have to pick the correct one. So recognition should be faster, easier, and the visit link helps with recognition and web navigation by providing cues as to where you've been. Now, Nielsen has been arguing for the visit link back since uh, 2004. It continues to be on his top 10 list of web design mistakes. It's number three right now. Uh, so with all this arguing, why aren't people listening? Why aren't they using the visit link? Good question. I think the answer is that visit links are ugly. So I don't know if you've seen uh, Jacob's website. It is fairly useful, but it ain't pretty. And I think that's what people are concerned about, that if we put these business links on our site, it's going to really detract from the overall visual design. It's going to turn a website like the one on the left into one like the one on the right here, where we've got different colors scattered about, um, it's very cluttered looking, and potentially this is going to distract users from their actual task. So are there alternatives? What else could we do? People have taken a look at this and they've come up with some creative solutions. Uh, for instance, in the top example here, people are actually using a background image to indicate visit links, putting a little check mark next to it. And the second example is very similar with a, a little radical appended to the visit links. Up here we see some visit links that have a strike through through them, and then a more complex design is this one down here, which actually um, hides the article summaries for articles that you've already visited. So this is really cool. It'd be great if we could do these things. Unfortunately, it turns out that doing such things opens up a security hole with your website, where other websites can come in, gain access to people's browser history, and therefore, um, therefore they can track where people are going and, and serve up targeted content based on that. So those are pretty much disallowed by most of the major browsers today. Really what you're restricted to has to do with visited color. So really the things that you can control are the foreground color, the background color, and then an out outline or border color. So really, you're probably going to want to go with the foreground color. And just a couple things on that foreground color to keep in mind. One is that I should try to make sure that the color for the visit link and unvisit link bear some resemblance to each other so people can kind of understand the connection. And typically, the visit link is a little more muted um, than the previous, than the other link. Um, also, keep in mind the contrast. Now, one website that does a really good job about this is, is Google. Obviously, they provide visit link color. But they also go so far as to provide additional information, like when you last visited, how many times you visited, and they even provide the ability to, to filter your results, not sort, um, based on whether you visit the pages or not, which makes a lot of sense for a search results. But what about other websites? Well, this is, uh, this is Walmart.com, and they actually have baby clothing in two places on their website in two different locations. So if you've gone to their website, looked at baby clothing, and come back the next day, could you find it again? Maybe not. But because they use a visit link, you'd have the clue that no matter which place you went, you'd probably be on the right track. Imagine being on Amazon, just browsing through cameras. If you went from this page to a Pock Details page and they came back and tried to continue your browsing, would you know where to pick up if the visit link were not there? And then uh, this is the New York Times most popular articles list. So obviously here, the visit link cues you into which uh, articles you've already read, which is very helpful because this updates regularly and the same article could be in two different locations. And finally, another example is Zappos. Uh, Zappos has a very uh, subtle difference between the visited and unvisited links. Um, it actually makes for a nice aesthetic and actually um, sits well uh, visually. But also, more importantly, it fits with their brand, which is all about helping the customer. 
So next time you're browsing the web, I just ask that you pay attention to the kind of effort that you have to expend. Just try to figure out where you've been. I think it'll give you a renewed appreciation for the good old this is Link.